Hey everyone, let's see how we can leverage that event delegation concept to optimize our Vue.js applications. We are building a simple to-do list here, so we can add more to-dos like test and then add has been added and we can delete them as well. Boom, it's gone. And here is the code. So it is really simple, nothing interesting here, just an input field binded with two-way binding and a button. If that button is clicked, we're going to add the to-do item and an unordered list where each list item has a span for that to-do name and also a button to delete the item. So it's pretty straightforward, but there is a catch. If we take a look in the browser and inspect and go to the event listeners tab and then try to get this element, for example, this list item right here. As agreed, it has a span for the item name and the button right there. If you check the click event listeners on this element, you're going to see the click event listener that we added. And same goes for the next one as well. So here for the second button, it has also a click event listener right here. And same applies for any list item that we're going to add to this list. And it's really not a problem. I mean, it works fine for small list, but imagine if you have hundreds of to-dos. That's hundreds delete buttons. Each one has its own click event listener. Your browser would go like, why are you doing this to me? It's not just inefficient, it's a memory hog. And what if you have more things, not just delete, you can have archive, you can have edit, you can have delete, so you can have, or you can end up with thousands of listeners. So how are we going to fix this? Easy, we can use a concept called event delegation. Here's how it goes. And instead of attaching a click event listener on each to do, uh, delete button, then I'm going to remove that from there and I'm going to delegate this task to the unordered list. The unordered list is outside of the v4 loop, therefore it is stable, it's not going to be repeated and it's going to handle any click event that happens inside of it. So I guess now it's clear why it's called event delegation. You are delegating one element to handle more than one event inside of it. So I'm going to remove this parents here and then modify the function so delete to do I don't want to receive anything or actually I want to receive the event because we're getting the native event now and let's console log the event target in the browser if I click on anything now I got the event target I got the element that caused this event and all of this is thanks to how events move in the DOM so for example here if we inspect on this list item it has the button right there. So if I click on the button, the click event is going to bubble to the list item, and then it's going to bubble to the unordered list, and then to the parent, and to the parent, all the way to the root element. Of course, we can stop events from bubbling up using the stop modifier, but this is not our topic now. Let's get back on track. What we care for is that we attached a click event listener on the unordered list. So when this click event bubbled to the unordered list, we're going to handle it but we have a challenge. So let me clear everything up. If I don't click on the button and I click on anywhere else, I got the span for the text because I clicked on it and we don't want that. We don't want to trigger the delete list item if we click on the span, not even if we click on the space between things because this is how it will go. It will trigger it every time we click on anything inside the unordered list. So we can exactly specify which element we're trying to catch events from. But let me first shut up TypeScript for a moment. This is a mouse event. And now let's store the delete button in a variable. And thank you GitHub Copilot, this is how we do it. We get to the event and then the targeted element. And then we use this special method. And it's really handy when we are using event delegation. So basically it's telling JavaScript to get us the closest element to where the click happened. And we want to get the closest dot delete dash btn, which is exactly the class that we have on the delete button right here. This is the one. So it's going to check where was the click event happened. And then it's going to search for the closest element with this class. And it couldn't be just class. It could be an ID, it could be just an element. So it's going to get that for us. And then we are going to say, if the click event happened on a delete button, then I want to delete that from this list over here. But there is another problem that we're facing. We don't have the ID for the item 
right there because we are outside of the loop. Only inside the loop, we can reach out to the to do ID like we're doing here for the key, for example. So how are we going to pass the key outside of the loop to this function over here? Well, here is where the data ID attribute comes in handy. We can pass to it the do ID like this and let me bind it. And then inside the function, since we are already storing the delete button in this variable, I'm going to get the item ID like this. Number, delete button, data set, and then ID. This data set is available because we already have this ID added right there. So we know that we are getting a value, but TypeScript doesn't. It doesn't know even if this HTML element, because that's all what we told it about. It's just an HTML element. It doesn't know if the data set property exists in that element. So we can make sure of it. So instance of HTML button element. And now it knows that the data set property exists on HTML button element. So it will no longer complain and we have the ID and we can work our magic. So to do's dot value and we filter out the items that we don't need and save. This way in the browser, everything will work exactly the same. We can delete items and if we click on anywhere else, nothing is going to happen and we delete only what we want to be deleted. Like this, it's gone. I personally think event delegation is really helpful when you are working on a big long list or you have a lot of buttons, you have a dashboard with a lot of actions to do. So I believe that this is the way to do it. Let me know what you think in the comments and thank you for watching.